Now so far in this uh, course of tutorials we've been looking at the editing of whole solid objects but this tutorial is going to look at the editing of what are called sub-objects. Now uh, every object uh, in AutoCAD, every 3D object, solid object, is composed of a number of sub-objects. This box for example is composed of uh, faces, uh, edges and vertexes and in most cases AutoCAD allows you to edit those sub-objects independently. Now if I were to just select this uh, box by clicking on it, the whole box is selected. If I just escape to uh, deselect. But if I want to select a sub-object like a face or an edge or a vertex, I can do that by holding the control key down. You, you'll notice that when I hold control key down as I am now, I'm able to select this face, or this face, or this face. And if I try very hard, I might be able to select an edge. It's not doing it for me there. As you can see, just using the control button on the keyboard to select edges and even vertexes is really quite difficult and uh, not ideal. However, you can place the cursor over the point you want to select, or the object, sub-object you want to select. Hold the, in addition to the control key, hold the shift key down and use the space bar on the keyboard to cycle through all the sub-objects. There we've got a vertex, a face, an edge, and so on. You can cycle through all of those objects each time you hit the uh, space bar on the keyboard. And so if I want to select this edge, for example, I must now release the shift key but keep my finger on the control key and then pick using my mouse to select that edge. Now, that's a real palaver and requires a lot of um, finger twisting on the keyboard and uh, not really recommended. So, there's a better way of doing it. If I just escape to uh, deselect that edge there. If we go and have a look at the sub object panel on the home tab of the uh, 3D modeling uh, ribbon. You'll see that uh, in addition to the gizmos that we've already looked at in previous uh, tutorials, we have another option here that currently says no filter. And no filter means that uh, by default when I move my cursor over an object, none of the sub-objects are immediately available other unless I uh, hold the control key down on the keyboard. However, if I click on here, just look at the, op the options here, you can see that I can filter my selections by vertex, by edge, and by face. So that if I want to select only uh, edges, I can set the filter to edge, and then as I move over the object, holding the control key down again, I'm now able to select just edges. And I get a little icon at the cursor telling me that the edge filter is on, and that's why I'm only able to select edges, which is really cool. In addition, I could set that to Vertex, for example, holding Control key down again allows me to select just the vertexes. Difficult to see that, but those vertexes are just highlighting as I move over them. And then I can use the Face filter, holding Control key down to filter by face. Now, this is a much, much easier way of selecting these sub-objects than using the keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so what can we do with these uh, sub-objects? Well, uh, we can use the gizmos and we can move them and we can rotate them and we can scale them. Let's just stick with moving for the moment and uh, let's just see what happens if we try to move um, a vertex. I've set the filter to vertex and the move gizmo is current on the sub-object panel there. Now when I move over the um, uh, box, the whole box highlights, but if I hold the control key down I'm filtering selection by um, by vertex and if I just move over this vertex down here in the in the bottom right and uh, click that you'll see that we get the uh, move gizmo at that location. Now if I uh, constrain movement in the uh, X direction by hovering over the X bar here click and drag and you can see immediately that uh, I'm able to move that 
vertex to a new location like that. If I just escape to deselect, you'll see that uh, we no longer have a box. We have, uh, well, a more strange object with an extra edge in here that uh, has been inserted to facilitate the movement of this, uh, this um, vertex. And if we just use the view cube to just move around that so you can see more clearly what's happened, there we go, you can see that that vertex has moved forwards towards us as we pulled it towards us and uh, we now have uh, a split face like that. Okay, I'm going to use just undo to go back to my previous view and to go back to uh, the box before it was edited uh, so that I can now demonstrate uh, moving an edge. So let's set the filter to edge and again move over the box, hold the control key down and this time I'm going to select this uh, bottom left edge here. Again we see the move gizmo in place and uh, if I want to move this edge in the Y direction I can uh, click on that and you can see immediately the effect there. Again the uh, it's no longer a box, it's a sort of part wedge, part box and um, I can click to uh, fix that there. Again escape to deselect and you can see the effect of moving uh, that edge. Let's undo that and uh, now have a look at uh, moving a face. Set the uh, filter to face and hold the control key down. Let's uh, move this face here. Select that one. Again I can uh, move in uh, various directions. This time let's go for the Z direction. So click that and now you can see that I'm moving that face vertically like that. And um, of course if I just uh, deselect that um, we can uh, create compound effects of course. We've moved uh, separate vertexes and edges and faces here but having moved that face I could go back, set the filter to edge, hold the control key down, select this edge here and move that edge like that. So we can start to create some very interesting forms from our basic primitives, like so.